Technical Creative Shrimps. Clap Alexander here for CreativeShrimp.com. Creative Shrimp is the place where artists go to learn tips and tricks about computer graphics, blender, art and coffee brewing. Welcome to another very exciting series of quick tips for blender. The classical blazing fast shrimpy tips and let's jump straight in. When I started recording this thing, I wanted to include the teddy bear at dawn quick tip. Press space. Search for simulate bear. Tweak number of buttons. <laughs> Enable the hair checkbox. Tweak the hair age. Hit render. I still think that was kind of a funny joke. On the fool's day, do you remember? Alright, now the real tips. You can remove that gizmo. If it really bothers you, press control space. Or go over here and click on this icon. Or if you like gizmos, for some reason you can enable rotation gizmo and scaling gizmo, just like in 3 years max. Number 2. How to rotate edges by 45 degrees. The first way to do it is just select all polygons, Control F and poke faces. That will crisscross every face with the triangles. Then press space, search for tries and select tries to quads. Now we can have some fun, inset the edges by pressing I. Maybe add some levels of subdivision. And we're good to go. Number 3. You can animate in real time using automatic keyframes. First of all, we have to press this red button. And now if we press Alt-A to begin playback, every action will get recorded. For example, I pressed G here to move the ball and I try to simulate the bouncing effect. And I must say, it's a hell of a fun to animate it in real time. Alright, so now we can grab the camera and animate the camera. So press Alt-A to start the playback. And just press Shift-F and look around. Bingo! We animated this scene in real time. So, the quick tip number 4 is the awkward topology for a sphere. The topology of the default sphere kind of sucks. If you add the subdivision surface, you'll see the pinching effect at the poles. And for example, if you're gonna use the displacement effect, uh, these topology issues will get you into trouble. Let's create a better topology by creating a sphere from a cube. So add a cube, add subdivision surface modifier, hit apply. And the one more thing that we need to do is press Alt-Shift-S to spherize the geometry. Now we've got a sphere with the perfect topology. It's perfect for sculpting, for displacement and for pretty much everything else. Number 5. Individual origins for move, scale, rotate. Here I want to show you a little trick with the pivot mode set to individual origins. So here we have a bunch of objects. Now I'm enabling the individual origins. Now I'm gonna press Shift Alt Control C and set origin to geometry. Now I'm pressing the S key to scale and see what happens. Really nice effect. And let's try rotating. Press R. I think that's awesome. Number 6. The light path node is cool. So in the node editor I'm gonna press Shift A and select shader, mix shader. And now I'm gonna press Shift A again and add the emission shader and connect it to the second socket of the mix shader. I will copy the color from the glossy shader and set the strength to 145. Now I'm adding the light path node. And I'm gonna plug the is camera array input over here. So we have separated the actual illumination of the object from what camera sees. So our object is glossy and the reflection is emissive. What a nice trick! Number 7. Press forward slash on the numpad to isolate. That's the easy one. You can select every object, press slash to isolate it. If a lot of things is going on in your scene and the scene is heavy, polygon-wise, you can isolate objects to avoid clutter. The quick tip number 8. Blender has freestyle renderer. All we have to do is enable this freestyle checkbox and as far as I know it's available in the Blender internal renderer. So I'm just gonna press the render button and watch the beautiful stylized outlines. That is great for all kinds of stylized stuff. Alright, you'll see you here. Keep watching. 9. Fracture objects with self-fracture. Let's get started by enabling the self-fracture add-on in the Blender user preferences. This is an amazing add-on for fracturing objects and stuff. Just open the left tool shelf by pressing T and... But first of all we have to create the particle system. Set the number of particles to 1000, start and end to 1, jump to the first keyframe, and now I'm gonna press self-fracture. 
And as the point source, select own particles. And set the source limit to 100, recursion to 2, to get more details in the fracture, and click OK. Wait till the smart algorithm fractures it, and click on the layer which is next to this layer. Now what we have to do is go to the Physics tab, over there, Rigid Body Tools, let's add Passive to the floor, then select the Self-Fractured Objects and click Add Active. Let's test the simulation by pressing Alt-A and whoa! I don't know why, but destroying objects mesmerizes me. Ok, let's make the simulation more complex by adding constraints. Select All Object, click on Connect, and for the type of the constraint, select Fixed. And now we can see that the objects got stuck, like they are sticky. Uh, we have to tweak some things here and there. Let's select one of the constraints, press Shift G and select by type. Now let's enable breakable in the constraint settings and set the threshold to 3. Right click, copy to select it. That will copy the settings to all the constraints. Now it looks good to me. I love destroying stuff. I don't know why really. Maybe there is something wrong with me. Ok, let's move on to the trackball style rotation. So we can just press R to rotate the objects like this, or we can double tap R to rotate the objects trackball style. Very simple trick, but good to know definitely. 11. Pi menus. Pi menu is this radial menu which has been recently added to Blender. Let's go to user preferences, add-ons, search for Pi and enable Pi menu. You can expand this tab, and for the sake of testing, just enable all of the settings. What this feature does is, for example, if you press Z, you can quickly select bounding box, view mode or wireframe, and you can do it in a blazing fast way. Just flash. This feature allows us to develop a muscle memory, which is kind of cool, I guess. Number 12. How to quickly switch between the different subdivision levels. Just press Ctrl and the number, for example, Ctrl 1, 2, 3, to quickly jump to that subdivision level. Or if you want to disable the subsurface modifier, just press Ctrl 0 and Ctrl and number to enable it back. Point number 13. I love this one. Model using particles and meta blobs. That is one of my favorite tips. Just enable particle system, press Alt A to preview how it looks, and the particle system settings go to field weights and disable the gravity. And now the stream of particles just goes up, but they die very quickly. Let's increase their lifetime. So I set it to 200. Now I'm gonna add the force field to make something interesting with these particles. For example, let's add vortex. And maybe also wind. Yeah, that will work. And now look at this nerd stuff. The particle stream pushed by these forces creates the Eiffel Tower. If that isn't cool, I don't know what is. But that's not everything. Look at this. Let's press Shift A and create a meta ball. Make it a little bit smaller. Select the particle system. Select the object for rendering and pick the meta ball. Now we just have to increase the size of the particle. Right now it's set to 0.05. Let's set it to 1. Oh, now we've got something interesting. Let's preview the animation by pressing Alt A. And you can see that we can model using particles and metaballs. Now what we can do is come over to the modifiers tab and press convert. And if for some reason you haven't tried this nerd style of modeling before, you're welcome. Now let's convert it to mesh by pressing Alt C. And voila! Thanks for watching, that was Gleb Alexander for CreativeShrimp.com. Creative Shrimp is the place where artists go to drink coffee? Subscribe to our channel right away, press the like button and feel free to share this video, that's really important for us because I don't own the media company, maybe someday I will and we need your help to share the videos, so please share this video with your friends, visit Creative Shrimp to learn even more tips like this and see you! Here are the special YouTube links and feel free to click on this one or this one.